Hey there, Bakugan fans. Welcome back to Bakumentary, your go-to show for competitive Bakugan Battle Planet news, gameplay, deck profiles, and more. I'm your host, Robo Sensei, and on today's episode, we are going to be profiling a brand new deck from Age of Auralis, focused around Auralis Green Ultra. Um, uh, this Bakugan isn't out yet, so currently I'm just using a Darkest Green Ultra because that's the only one that's available in place of Auralis. I have printed out a proxy for the character card. Um, deck's purpose is basically get out Green's Evos, and he has an underdog ability on his first two that say when you open, if you're lower B, you can play the next Evo from your hand for free. Uh, so let's get into it here. Um, our first Bakugan is Aquas Cubo Core, um, 105 Magic Shield Flaming Fist, and on Magic Shield or Flaming Fist, plus 600 B, and that makes him a 1355 on a Magic Shield. Uh, we don't play his Evo because uh, deck doesn't need the space for it, and honestly it doesn't doesn't really need the Evo, because 1355 is pretty good. Um, rolls pretty smoothly. Um, is a little not flat, like the rest of the uh, cores are. A little feet kind of stick around here, but he is still pretty good at doing precision rolls. Um, next block down here, we have the man himself. Orless Green Ultra, yes, it is gold, trust me. Uh, Shield Fist, 206, so not very good to start out with, but Underdog, when this opens, if it has lower B than the opposing Bakugan, you may play Orless Hyper Green Ultra for free. And we'll get into the Evo in a moment here, but that just means if you have it in your opening hand and you roll them and open them, you're starting off with your first Evo, and that's amazing. Um, and if you have a reroll, then you can reroll them, and if you have the second Evo in your hand, you can just have the third, you can just have both Evos out and play immediately. Um, Santa's that's pretty good. And then our third Bakugan is for support, and we need that support from Darkus. And Darkus Fangzar Ultra is a 601 with Magic Shield Shield, and it has Natural Shadow Strike, should that ever be important. Um, Ventus is picking up, uh, Tusk Guard, their one cost minus 300, um, Nature's Power especially, um, they're, those cards are going to be seeing play a little more with more good Ventus stuff coming out every set. And we need Darkus in here for a support card that we'll get into later, as well as just being able to throw in Pact of Darkness. Um, Green is a little interesting, because sometimes he just doesn't open, sometimes he flings the core, sometimes he doesn't. Uh, maybe flinging the core can be beneficial. Uh, sometimes he just opens like this, and the tail doesn't come out. Uh, I'll have to eventually work out a system for him. He is a little also not very smooth, but then again, he's an ultra. Um, I'll, I'll be working on ways to figure out how to roll him correctly, either whether forwards or backwards is going to be best for him. And maybe the Auralis one when it comes out will just be better, but for right now, I've just got to test with the Darkest one. And then Fangzor Ultra is another kind of awkward mold to roll, but he does kind of have the potential to pick up two cores if you roll them backwards, because they'll just open like this and it'll bounce and maybe pick up a second core. He is one of the biggest Bakugan, uh, and I just really like his design. He's a really cool looking King Cobra Snake. Uh, for our Baku cores, we have two Magic Shields, a Fist, a Flaming Fist, and two Shields. These are all just going to be the generic best ones that are type. We got two 650 Magic Shields, a plus 150B, plus 2 damage rating Fist, a plus 250B, plus 3 damage rating Flaming Fist, and two plus 300 Shields. We don't play the Darkest Aquas Shield because um, maybe green on a Magic Shield might be too big, and a green on a Fist or Flaming Fist might be too small, so we just have the plus 300, so we can just pick up that good 300 boost so he can not have zero on it in case uh, your magic shield gets stolen by Consort or Chaos Titanilius or something like that. But yeah, uh, so getting into it, our first Evos here are hyper... Um, we only play Evos for green. Fangzor Ultra's Evo isn't that good, not worth the space. Kubo's Evo is good, but we don't have the space for it and we don't really need the space for it. Uh, so first up is Hyper Green Ultra. Four costs, 708. That's not very good, except... From Green Ultra's character card, if it opens and has a lower B than the other Bakugan, you can play Hyper for free. 
So that four cost eventually becomes a zero cost, 500B upgrade, and two damage rating upgrade. So this one also says underdog when this opens, if it has lower B than the opposing Bakugan, you may play Maximus or Liskarin Ultra for free. And that's going to be pretty good. So we do play three of these. We want to draw as early as possible. It's the maximum amount. You probably never want to be playing less than three copies of an Evo anyway. But Maximus Green Ultra is a 10 cost. So that doesn't matter. We're going to be playing him for free. And it goes up to 1612. That's 900 up from Hyper. And that's four damage up from Hyper. And overall from the base green, it's 1400 up and six up. Uh, so that's pretty good, especially if you can get it out in the first turn of the game by opening it, playing Hyper, re-rolling, and playing Maximus. But that's given that you have both Evos in your opening hand, and if you do that, you pretty much win, because you're going to be milling 12 on the first turn. And then you have Kubo to hit another 5, and then by the turn that you have to roll things, or you have access to all your powerful B-boosters, which we'll get into later. Uh, no effect here, there's no Mega Maximus to go into further than this. Uh, 1612 is an ultimate beast as a base form, or not a base form, but still an evil that you can play for free, especially an evil you can play for free on the first turn. Um, so yeah, uh, automatic shield, you're hitting 2250, 12, and that, well, Hydronoid's evo is 2450, 12, or 2450 B, um, I mean, you're getting this out faster most likely, so yeah, Maximus Green is pretty good. And that's, that's really what we're building back around here. Uh, we don't, again, yeah, we don't play Hyper Cub, we don't play Hyper Fangzor, we don't have the space, and they're just not worth warranting it. Uh, since we don't have Pyrus, we are pretty much playing all the Evos, or all the rerolls we can. We don't really need uh, Thunderstorm, because we have Dark Forge, or we have Dark Waters, which is basically just Thunderstorm without having to sacrifice. And also, we don't really need too many rerolls because uh, the only time you're really going to need to reroll is if you're going to be playing both green evos at once, or if you miss for some reason. Uh, so, Dark Waters, one cost plus 200b, and you may reroll your Bakugan. Usually, uh, if you need the space for a reroll here, you're probably playing Deep Dive instead, which we also play Deep Dive. But this is pretty good because we don't have Quick Fire Super Fuel access. We're just Aquas Darkus here. So plus 200 B and you may reroll. That's pretty good. Um, and the thing is, having these big base forms, the 1350 and the 1600 from Maximus, and the 1250 that Fangzor can hit, um, you don't need too much B sometimes. Sometimes this 200 could be enough. Uh, sometimes you just want to play this so you can not reroll maybe, and then hit, uh, hit the Wave Slash later. But yeah, Dark Waters is, I think, pretty good for this setup. And then we do, of course, play Deep Dive. It's one of the best rerolls next to Quick Fire and Super Fuel. One cost, draw a card and you may reroll your Bakugan. It's two effects that are pretty much worth one energy on their own and one card for only one energy. Drawing a card is amazing. You're trying to dig for your Evos. You're trying to dig for um, Dark Fortune so you can search the Evos. It's just a great card. And plus, being able to reroll, that's it's it's amazing. Uh, like I said before, it's... It, it does two really good things in one card for only one energy. Next up we have Tides, one of the generic um, B-boosting cards for Aquas. One cost, plus 200B. Flow, if you've played another card this turn, or actually if it's not the first card you've played this turn after the errata, uh, plus 400B instead. And that's a one cost, plus 400. And we have another one of those, technically one cost, plus 400s. We'll get into it a little bit later. But otherwise, it's just one of the generic Aquas' good, cheap B-boosters. So we play three of those. Next up, Blinding Ink. I did not go over this in my uh, Mantanoid Heroes deck profile because it kind of doesn't have the space for it sometimes. Uh, Blinding Ink is a two-cost action card that says negate an action card that costs three energy or less. Most of the actions in the game that people are going to be playing, or at least people at a competitive level, are going to be three cost or less. You're not really going to be seeing many four or five cost actions outside of stuff like maybe Riptide or Qpocalypse. Or Tusk Guard, I guess. Uh, mm, I actually don't know if Tusk... No, because Tusk Guard says you may play it for free, not this is free. Uh, so yeah, negate an action card that costs three or less. That's going to be most of the actions that people are going to be playing. Uh, so this... It just outclasses Triple Blast Cannon, sort of. 
uh, it can only target actions. It doesn't target heroes or flips. Oh, jeez, imagine if you negate a flip. I guess that's just Frost Strike. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you're you're hitting stuff like people's Wave Slash, people's Hurricane Winds. Uh, negating a Dark Fortune kind of hurts them. Uh, negating Inferno Wings. You're negating a Liquid Arts, maybe. Uh, wildfire, that would probably hurt for them. If they need Wildfire, then they're probably going to hurt a lot if they negate that. So yeah, we play three of those because it's amazing. Moving on, we have Hurricane Winds. Went over this in the last deck profile too. It allows you to play your three cost card. It allows, it allows you to play Wave Slash on turn three. That's pretty good. Uh, if you have the ideal setup, you can, you're can. you going to be needing Wave Slash on turn three so you can win. Um, third, uh, three cost plus 300B, you may play an action card that costs four or less for free. That's pretty great. Um, the reason I have this in here is solely because there are some cards that we want to play to not feel as bad. And um, that's Wave Slash, so you can play it on turn three, and Dark Fortune, which we'll go over later. Uh, so after Hurricane Winds, we have Liquid Arts, which is a three cost plus 400B, which would really suck unless, except that it does have Auraless Power. If you have Auraless Bakugan on your team, which we do, which is green, don't worry, it's Auraless, trust me. Uh, this costs two less to play. And so that's a one cost plus 400 that doesn't need the flow effect from Tides. So if you draw this on your opening hand and you have, you also have Tides, you can just play this and get the 400 instead. Uh, really strong. I only have one of these because it isn't really out yet. And it came in one of the boxes, or for the Wave 7 starter packs and battle packs. So I got lucky enough to have at least one copy. Uh, next up we have Wave Slash, one of the best B boosters in the game. 3 cost plus 300, or flow, if you if this isn't the first card you've played in this turn, plus 1000 instead. Hurricane wins into it, you wait until turn 4, you can play a 1 cost into it. It's amazing. Um, not really much else to say. Plus 1000 is a solid boost, especially for only 3 energy. And then we have Dark Fortune. A very good card in this specific deck because we really need to get our green evos out. That's kind of the whole point of the deck. Dark Fortune is a 3 cost action. Search your deck for an evil card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Unlike how Magnus just says to search your deck for a card and not do anything with it and then shuffle your deck. This says that you have to put it into your hand and then shuffle your deck. And this means that you can play this after the selection phase. So you select green, you play this, and then you can search for your Hyper or your Maximus, whichever one you need, and then roll. Uh, that's pretty good. And because of Dark Fortune is a reason why I play Shun over, or Strata over Shun. Uh, so yeah, uh, the, also why we play Hurricane Winds is so that you can play Dark Fortune on turn three without it feeling as bad. You're playing all your energy on that turn just to search for a card. Sure, you're still getting the boost from that. You're getting a 400, or um, a 500B boost if you're on green, or you're getting an, um, what is it, 700 to 1600? Yeah, you're getting a 900B boost if you're playing it um, if you're playing into Hyper from, or from Hyper to Maximus. Uh, but with Hurricane Winds, it increases that overall B gain by 300, which sometimes is enough and all you need. So yeah, Dark Fortune, we play three of these because uh, it's important to have. We need, we need to search out the Evos, and this is really the best way we can do it besides just drawing cards. Moving on, we play Riptide only at two copies, just like some other actions. Or er, Riptide is usually never going to be seen at three copies. Uh, four cost, you must open, you, you must reroll your Bakugan. If you open on the reroll, that Bakugan gets plus 500B, and you may draw two cards. Most of the time, we are going to be drawing two cards, because, uh, drawing, drawing our Evos is really important, like I said, with, uh, especially with Dark, Dark Fortune, we really need our Evos. That's what makes a deck survive. Kubo and Fangs were strong, but not strong enough to keep the entire deck on its feet alone. Um, what I want to know about this is, can we let the underdog ability go into the batch first and then put the may draw two cards on top i'm not sure if unless um yeah i i'm not sure if you're able to trigger the underdog ability if you don't already have the evo in your hand but uh i guess i'll just have to ask about that and wait for a confirmation but uh yeah so riptide pretty good don't deck yourself out by drawing those two cards. I'm going to probably say that every time I bring up Riptide. 
Uh, and then we play another new card. We play Sinkhole. Which, uh, yeah, we kind of do need it. So Sinkhole is 4 cost negate an action or hero card. That's pretty good. Uh, you can play Hurricane Winds into it, so you can get the B gain on top of your negate, getting you a pretty good gain. And this negates any action or any hero. And this is good for combating Mac. Now, if we're stuck on Fangzor Ultra, Mac is going to suck for us. If we're on green, we're probably winning a Mac turn. Kubo may or may not win a Mac turn. Uh, yeah, Kubo's probably not winning a Mac turn because it's only 5. You're going to have to bait out the Mac if you roll onto a Flaming Fist and get the 8 damage off that. But it's not worth the risk. So we have this just as insurance for Mac. Uh, it's still, it also just kind of acts as more bigger Blinding Inks because we can negate any action from this. Uh, we can negate a Dan before they put it down. We can negate a uh, a Search Magnus, so they can't search out anything with that. Uh, we can negate a Leah or a Winton or a Dan from Maximus, so they can't um, activate their win that turn. Uh, yeah, so Sinkhole is pretty good. Uh, it's mainly going to be put in decks to shut off Mac, so you don't just lose to Mac. We have a lot of Mac Might insurance. We have um, a three Blinding Inks and two Sinkholes, so we can get rid of Midas Indius with Blinding Ink and get rid of Mac with Sinkhole. So we're pretty much not losing to aggro decks if they decide to play those those turns. And then, something that could be controversial, I am playing Strata over Shun. The reason is, on turn 2, if I put down Strata, I can draw into Dark Fortune on turn 3 and play it. Whereas, whereas with Shun, if I pay 3 for Shun on turn 3 and I draw Dark Fortune, I can't play it. I'd have to wait until next turn. Um... There is the possibility... Okay, so yeah, Strata is just for making sure that I can draw into um, draw into Dark Fortune first. If I draw into an Evo with Shun, I could probably still play it. Again, I'm not sure if I can um, resolve the underdog effect if I don't have the Evo in my hand. But if we don't... Ha if, that, if it does work like that, where you can resolve the underdog effect and you don't have the evil in your hand and you play Shun and you roll and you choose to draw off Shun, or if you put Green's underdog in the batch first and you put Shun on top of that and then you draw into the evo and then you let the underdog resolve and play the evo, sure, that'll work. But I play Strata here because I want to, if I don't have Dark Fortune already, I want the chance to draw that so I can play it on turn three and have an even bigger chance of getting the evo off the draw. Uh, also, it's just cheaper. You can get it out faster. Um, it feel the. It feels less bad that if if they negate Strata than having your Shun negated. Um, also, uh, Kubo and Fangzor aren't really dealing that much damage, and Shun or Strata making the opponent draw an additional card is extra cards out of their deck, so that you kind of you can sort of get less cards out of your out of their deck meaning that it's less damage you're going to have to deal in the end game. So yeah, uh, that's why I choose Strata over Shun. You could probably play Shun and still be safe anyway, but personally, I like I like Strata more here. And then we play 3 Pact of Darkness, because we're Darkest, and we need a flip. Uh, Pact of Darkness, 4 cost, stop non-Darkest, now it's pretty bad, except Sacrifice, you might discard a card to play it for free, that's pretty good. Uh, again, like Stand Together, like Tiger Reflex, Playing flips for free is amazing. Um, Frost Strike might be a problem, but... I mean, <laughs> it's packed. You gotta play it. So yeah. Um, haven't been able to really test any games with this yet. Because uh, I uh, haven't have really been able to build up a Locals yet. But I do feel this is, can be really strong. You already have Kubo. You have um, Fangzor's support. I mean, it's only 1250 you're only dealing one damage. Uh, they're probably going to let it win if you're ahead, and they can just take the one damage. But that's fine. That means you're one step closer to a team attack, and you can use your other stuff again. I think it's. I think it can. I think it does have the potential to be really strong. I don't think it's top top tier. I think it can be top mid tier, maybe, or like yeah, like high B tier. Not probably not an A tier deck, but I do think it's going to be really strong. I can't wait to get the Orlis Green Ultra single. Uh, it will be a sing an Ultra single in one of the next couple waves. 
So hopefully I can be able to get my hands on one of those. Uh, we'll go over a, yeah, we'll do an unboxing, a competitive overview of it when it does come out. But otherwise, yeah, I really like this, uh, the idea of this deck and I want to see it succeed in the future. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed one of the first Age of Aurelis deck profiles out there. Um, I got the Aquas Cubo unboxing coming up on Friday. Um, I, I was just really excited to build this green deck as soon as I saw it revealed on the Bakugan Twitter. Uh, subscribe on YouTube for more like this, and follow me on Twitter at the Robo Sensei to see more insightful Bakugan content.